Another operation that you frequently have to do when you are programming is work with files, and in particular, simple text files or something that you wind up reading in a lot and manipulating. And so, you know, just starting off, we want to have the ability to do this in Scala. If nothing else, it gives us the ability to read in larger data sets. Um, to illustrate this, I've created a little file called matrix.txt. It is not a large data set. It's just a little four by three matrix. We have four rows. Each one of those has three columns in it. And I want to demonstrate that we can read this into our program. So how do we do this? Well, turns out that the reading from file is in the same package as our standard input functions. It's scala.io. And so I'm going to add an import here scala.io dot and I'm just going to input or to import source so source is a class and an object that is used to read data uh, text data from something and if we're going to read from a file we can get a source by saying source dot from file and then giving it the name of the file that we want to read in this case I should be able to say matrix dot txt now the source type gives us back something akin to our collections it's like a sequence but it's not an array or a list it's something called an iterator and the difference between an iterator versus an array or a list is that the iterator is consumed as it's used the fundamental methods on an iterator are next and has next. So you can ask it, do you have another element? And if the answer is yes, then you can call next to get that element. And you can repeat that over and over again. Now it turns out iterator also has map and filter and many of the other methods that, that we've talked about for the collections. But once you call map and you've run all the way through it, that original iterator is now gone. You have a new iterator that has the mapped values but you can't go back through it. Obviously we could open the file again, but that's generally inefficient. The reason for doing this is because files could be really, really big and you don't want to have to load the entire file into memory. So instead you only keep just enough for what you're doing right now. The thing about source, when you call from file, technically as you can see here, you get back a buffered source. That source is an iterator of characters. So if I call next on this, if I said source.next, as you can see there, it returns a care. Well, let's go look at this file. I really don't want to just get the three. I could read this one character at a time. I could get three, two, space, one, four, space, etc. But that's going to be kind of hard to work with. A lot of times what I want is actually whole lines. So, turns out there is a nice method on the source called get lines. And this method returns an iterator of string. So our original source was an iterator of characters. It gave us one character at a time. Calling lines gives us back an iterator of string, which gives us back a whole line at a time. So now if I were to call get once, I would get this whole first line there. If I called it again, I'd do this. Also, if I do things like mapping on it, I will be mapping against the entire line not individual characters. And that's exactly what I want to, to do here. I will take and build our matrix. I will take our lines and I will map those lines. Now each of those lines has multiple numbers on it. I need to get to those individual numbers. I'd really like this matrix to be like an uh, have data of doubles. I'm actually going to make it an array of array of doubles. Yeah. So how am I going to do that? Well, if I have a single line, I need to take that line and I need to break it up on spaces. Well, we saw earlier that we could do line.split and break it on the spaces. Now, of course, when I split the line, this is gonna give me back an array of strings. If I hover over here right now, I have an array, I have an iterator of arrays of strings. I don't want strings. I happen though all of those strings are numbers, so I can then take each element, each one of those numbers, and map it to a conversion to double. 
And now if I come and look here, I have an iterator of arrays of doubles. I don't really want the iterator. I can convert the iterator to an array simply by calling to array. And now I have the array of array of doubles that I wanted. After converting it to an array, the whole thing has been loaded into memory now. And anytime you open a file, you should always close them. And so I want to remember to close the source that I opened here. If you close the source before you're done with stuff, before you've either converted it to an array or a list or just stopped using it completely, you'll get an error. Okay, so so if, I, if I didn't convert this to an array and then I close the file and then I tried to do something with matrix, I'd have a problem because that iterator is dependent upon the file being open and having the ability to, to read it. So this will load in our, our little uh, four by three matrix. Uh, it's actually fairly short code. In fact, I, if I were interested in doing so, a lot of times I would write this here instead of introducing a variable. I'd just say, I wanna take the lines, I wanna map it so that each line is split on the spaces and then the things that result from that are converted to doubles and I want to take the whole thing and convert it to an array. That's how I'd read that line of code there. The other thing we need to do with text files, we need to be able to write back out to them. So, I don't know, maybe I want to write out these, the row sums of my matrix. Scala does not include its own text file writing library because they figured that the ones that exist inside of Java are just fine. So we actually use the print writer which is part of the Java libraries. And you can pass a print writer a file name. Now notice this is unhappy. Turns out that print writer is a java.io.print writer, and so we need an import statement. Since this is the first time I've had the, uh, the need to do this, I'm gonna show you a shortcut in Eclipse. If I hit Control Shift O, it figures out what needs to be imported there. Oops, I am missing the keyword new because I need to make a new print writer that is writing to that file and note when I hit the control shift O this line got added to my imports at the top I have opened the file I want to remember to close it so I'll do it and write it there now so that I can't forget it and then I need to write out all those sums so for that I could do I could use a for loop I could use a for each since I assume that most readers are probably more familiar with the for loop, I'm going to use the for each. Eclipse likes to do the methods like for each using curly braces instead of parentheses. This works just fine. If you have something that's only using an underscore, it's a little bit overkill. Um, I'm gonna change the X to row, and then I need to, I want to write out the sum of the row. Okay, well writing out I, the print writer has a method in it called print line, so I can print to it just like I could print to the screen. And I wanna take the sum of our row. And so if I were to run this code, I don't need to input anything there. We read in this matrix, and technically we should have a row sum here which has the sums across each one of these. So let's see, this one would be 69 for the second number. Indeed, that is uh, the value that we have. So we were able to read this in and then write out a new file um, using a source for reading values and a print writer for writing things back out.